our current managerial elite predicates its rule on the notion of expertise. Americans once believed that popular will granted a ruling class legitimacy, but that story has been replaced with one of scientific knowledge and credentials. The modern political formula frames the world as a complex series of interconnected scientific disciplines that, if managed with a high degree of proficiency, can yield incredible material abundance and miraculous technological innovations. Competency is the key to utopia. Those who are able to obtain prestigious credentials gain the right to rule due to their unparalleled ability to manage complex systems. But a fundamental shift in our political formula has put the system on a collision course with disaster. The woke cultural revolution has escaped the universities that incubated its poisonous rhetoric and rooted itself deeply into every critical institution in the United States. This destructive doctrine seemed strange but quaint when it was being chanted by delusional college students, but everyone should have learned by now that the fashionable college ideology of today becomes the ruling dogma of tomorrow. The armed forces, major corporations, and medical schools now prioritize diversity over the ability to perform tasks that are critical to people's survival. Major institutions that are supposed to safeguard the critical functions of our civilization are more interested in elevating trans women of color than the ability of the organizations to properly execute their functions. Selecting brain surgeons by the obscurity of their sexual preferences instead of their success rate would have sounded like a comedy sketch 10 years ago, but no one is laughing now. Part of the managerial formula meant delegating all major social decisions to this distributed network of expert institutions. Power in the hands of a single leader, even an elected one, could be dangerous. Better to spread that responsibility across many highly competent organizations that specialize in the relevant disciplines. This makes decisive action more difficult, but in theory it dramatically raises the quality of the policies that will eventually be implemented. That sounds great when you're still pretending that these institutions are selecting the best and the brightest, but now, come on, that's just delusional. Expertise became the holy doctrine of our civilization, and every decision, from how parents educate their children to what we say to each other on the internet, is mediated by these managerial institutions. These organizations, which now control our lives to an unprecedented degree, are run by those who are most willing to genuflect before the gods of diversity, equity, and inclusion. These days it's impossible to thrive with just one job. Between increasing living costs, paying off debts, and planning for the future, things like buying a home, building savings, and even going on vacation can seem like fantasies. If your goal is financial freedom, you could start taking on more hours at your current job, work towards a promotion or try putting your money into something risky like stocks, cryptocurrencies, or even a side hustle. But at the end of the day, do you really want to sacrifice time and energy that could otherwise be spent with your loved ones or on your hobbies just to make a living? Luckily, you don't have to hustle to reliably make more money. All you have to do is job stacking. Job stacking is the best way for regular people, regular employees, to unleash their earning potential and increase job and financial security. How? by working multiple jobs, but without burning out or more importantly, getting caught by corporate overlords. Job stacking allows you to reliably receive paychecks from multiple employers each month without having to work more than eight hours a day. You don't have to be in tech or any particular field or industry to do it as long as you can work remotely. If you've thought about working multiple jobs but you're not sure how to start or are afraid of getting caught, Get the fundamental job stacking course today and learn all of the secrets on how to sustainably work multiple full-time jobs from the foremost expert on the matter, Rolf Halza, author of Job Stacking. Rolf has worked multiple full-time jobs since 2018, including hybrid jobs, and has condensed all of his experiences and wisdom into a single four-module online course so you can start proficiently job stacking without having to make mistakes, figuring things out on your own, or reinventing the wheel in the process. Go to www.jobstacking.com and enter the promo code ORIN to get a special discount. This selection of ideological loyalty over merit has created a competency crisis inside our critical institutions. The older generations, selected for their ability to do their jobs, are being phased out, and the new generations, selected for their skin color and gender fluidity, simply cannot maintain the civilization they have been handed. In many instances, technological innovation continues due to visionary entrepreneurs, but the social infrastructure on which those innovations rest is crumbling. 
We have placed more decision-making power into the hands of massive bureaucracies than at any time in human history. But those bureaucracies are increasingly staffed by functionaries who couldn't make a basic repair to their homes or cars if their life depended on it. The glue of competency that held this complicated social machinery together is coming apart, yet we continue to shift more and more responsibility to these failing institutions. We often assume that the amount of time a society has to make decisions about its future is static, but that's not the case. While it's comforting to think that extended deliberation will always yield an educated consensus on what steps to take next, the truth is that events often shrink the window of opportunity to make deliberate choices, and societies are instead swept away by circumstance. The rapid advancement of technology and the interconnected nature of the modern world have greatly reduced the space in which deliberation can occur before the consequences of an event manifest themselves globally. At the same time, the institutions to which we have delegated all of our decision making are less competent and more ideological. The combination of collapsing decision space and the competency crisis inside institutions designed to make those decisions creates a runaway process of acceleration. As the philosopher Nick Land put it, quote, the profound institutional crisis that makes the topic hot has at its core an implosion of social decision-making capability. Doing anything at this point would take too long, so instead events increasingly just happen. End quote. As events accelerate and decision space shrinks, our incompetent and sclerotic institutions will prove incapable of keeping up. Instead of shaping major events, they will, more often than not, simply react to the fallout. As faith in distributed expertise falters, the populace will become more likely to prefer unified and decisive action. Ultimately, sovereignty lies in exercising the power to make decisions, and if the incompetent bureaucratic institutions or our managerial elite fail to do so, the future will belong to leaders who can. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and click like. And if you haven't subscribed yet, now is a great time to do so. If you'd like to get these broadcasts as podcasts, make sure to subscribe to the Or McIntyre Show on your favorite podcast platform. And when you do, please leave a rating or a review. That really helps with the algorithm magic. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter or Substack or Gab, if you'd like to watch these episodes on Rumble or Odyssey, the links to do all of that are down below in the description. And of course, you can watch all of my episodes and read all of my columns over at The Blaze. Thanks for watching, guys. And as always, I'll talk to you next time.